So we are going to be talking about Web Vitals, and more specifically, Core Web Vitals. It is a Google initiative centered around providing an optimal user experience on all websites. Under Web Vitals, they have three specific ones that they consider Core Web Vitals at this time. Those include Largest Contentful Paint, First Input Delay, and Cumulative Layout Shift. And these specifically focus on three things, loading, interactivity, and visual stability. Data for Core Web Vitals is generated in two different ways. First is lab data, also known as synthetic data. This uses a predefined set of device and network conditions in order to generate the data. Field data, which uses real user monitoring, collects data from actual devices, so it takes into account things like network conditions and geography. So that's based on the actual site users, not just like predetermined lab data. Now, something to keep in mind with Web Vitals and Core Web Vitals is it is a product of a single company. So this is only Google. You need to take that into account when working with Core Web Vitals that it is the opinion of a single company. The first metric that we're going to look at is largest contentful paint. It is the loading metric of the three. It reports the render time of the largest image or text block visible within the viewport relative to when the page first started loading. So LCP focuses on what the user actually sees on their screen. It has three potential scores. If the largest contentful paint appears within the first two and a half seconds, that's considered a good score. From two and a half seconds to four seconds, that needs improvement. And anything above four seconds is considered poor. So the types of elements that are taken into account for LCP are images, videos, any element with a background image that's loaded via a URL so it wouldn't be like gradients, or block level elements that contain text. So we're going to look at a couple of examples so you can see exactly where LCP is reported by the browser. So first we're going to look at the conference website. In this film strip you can see that data is painted to the screen at about two seconds. You can see the menu and the opening text. But the actual LCP doesn't fire until around three seconds. You can see how it's highlighted in green. And that is when the background image behind that text finishes loading. The second film strip we're going to look at, you can see that content is painted pretty early at around two and a half seconds. But it isn't until around four seconds that LCP is fired. And you can see it's that image up at the top highlighted in green. The reason that you can see progress on that image loading is that's a red flag. That's telling us that that image is taking a little bit too long to download. And if we look at the source, you can see that it is a single image and it's a rather large one that is being served to mobile. If the site instead used source set to provide multiple sizes, which WordPress can do, then the mobile size wouldn't, it could download a much smaller image and it wouldn't be having this kind of problem. So some things that you can do are optimize your images, uh, make sure that you can use source set, especially on large hero images. You also want to make sure that you delay or just for JavaScript as much as possible. Since JavaScript is a blocking resource, whenever it's coming in at the top, the browser has to halt everything that it's doing, download it, parse it, just in case that something in that JavaScript is going to modify how something is laid out or how it looks. So try to defer it if you can. Put async on it, um, put defer on the script, or even best yet, move it down to the footer if it's not necessary for initial render. Overall, you want to look at optimizing for what's called the critical rendering path. So by really focusing on the initial load of the site, um, that can really bring down your LCP score and essentially present the website faster to the user. First input delay, or FID, is it's the interactivity metric. This measures the time for when a user first interacts with a page, when they click a link, tap a button, or use a JavaScript-powered control, to the time when the browser is actually able to begin processing event handlers in response to that interaction. So similar to LCP, this does have a range of scores. Anything less than 100 milliseconds is considered good. Between 100 and 300 is, needs improvement, and everything over 300 milliseconds is considered poor. Now, the most common culprit of slow first input delay is JavaScript. So if you have a lot of JavaScript at the top and it is maxing out the main thread, that means that the browser can't respond, respond to user input. So if someone tries to tap or do anything else and the browser can't respond, 
then that can have a negative impact on first input delay. Now, since FID can't be measured in the lab, total blocking time is considered a valid substitute when working with lab data. So if you want to improve uh, first input delay, um, focus on reducing total blocking time in your development process, and that can bring down the FID. Next up is cumulative layout shift, and that is the visual stability metric. What CLS is, it's a measure of the largest burst of layout shift scores for every unexpected layout shift that occurs during the entire lifespan of a page. A layout shift occurs any time a visible element changes its position from one rendered frame to the next. So the scores for this, anything less than 0.1 is considered good. 0.1 to 0.25 needs improvement, and anything over 0.25 is poor. Even though you may not be familiar with the term cumulative layout shift, you've definitely seen it in action. So anytime that you are watching a website load, especially over a slow connection, and you see content shifting around, that is CLS. So let's say, for instance, there's a large hero image and there's no space reserved. So as the image comes in or suddenly pops in, it can force content down. But the thing about CLS is it's not just the initial load. It is the entire lifespan of the page. So as the user scrolls down, anything that is popping in and causing things to shift around, those reflows contribute to the CLS score. To quote directly from the CLS page, layout shifts are defined by the layout instability API, which reports layout shift entries anytime an element that is visible within the viewport changes its start position. For example, its top and, top and left position in the default writing mode between two frames. Such elements are considered unstable elements. So new elements added to the DOM or existing elements that are changing size are not necessarily considered layout shifts as long as they do not cause pre-existing visible elements to change their start position. Animations and transitions, they do not negatively affect CLS. Um, as long as you respect the user's prefers reduced motion setting, you can feel free to animate and move things around that way and it won't affect it. So some techniques that you can use to help with CLS. Always include the width and height attributes on images, especially when lazy loading. So that way, as the user is scrolling, the space for those images is already reserved. So that way, when the image comes in, is not causing things to move around. And you should only insert content above existing content if it's in response to user action. Anything that occurs within a half second of a user action is considered normal functionality. Once again, we're gonna look at some web page test film strips. In this first example, we can see that some basic content is written to the screen, including that top banner. But then it looks like a custom font maybe loads in and it causes the spacing of the text of change. And so that top section expands, causing the content below it that's already there to shift down, including that large hero image. Another thing that we see is the when the hero image does come in, it pushes the content, those blue boxes down as well. And then the blue boxes themselves down in the lower section, since they don't have a set width, when the content is loaded, they start shifting around as well. So that can affect CLS. The next example actually has a perfect CLS score. This is the one we were looking at previously that had the large image in the hero. So in this example, we can see that there is space reserved for that hero image. And so as it comes in, it's not moving anything around. Now, an interesting thing to point out at this one is if you look at two and a half seconds, you can see the purple highlighted area. That's actually a broken image. And so what you're seeing is the broken image icon and the alt text. So what happens since they have a width and height on that image, it already has the space reserved. So as the image comes in in the last frame, it's, it wouldn't be affecting any CLS scores. I would highly recommend in this instance not to use lazy loading, in this case, JavaScript lazy loading, on any image that could appear on the page on first render. You want to have any images that appear that high up on the screen to be found by the browser as quickly as possible. So that way they show up faster and don't affect CLS. So Google themselves provide a variety of tools for testing web vitals. And you can even find core, some core web vitals on webpagetest.org if you look at the top results table. The first tool is Chrome User Experience Report. 
or Crux Report. It was launched in 2017 and it provides data from real users and gathered from public websites. Now it only comes from the Chrome browser and it's only users who have opted into browsing history syncing, have not set up a sync passphrase, and have usage statistics reporting enabled. Another tool you may be familiar with is Google Search Console. It was previously named Webmaster Tools. It recently added an experience section. So the overview provides a percentage of URLs on the site with a good page experience. Two other sections of note are the Core Web Vitals section and the Mobile Usability Report. I would recommend jumping into the mobile usability report from time to time as it can give you specific examples of problems that you may be having on mobile, including content too wide for screen. PageSpeed Insights is an on-demand tool. It focuses on speed and analyzes both mobile and desktop, and it returns both field and lab data. Now, the suggestions, you need to take those with a grain of salt because they're recommendations, but they don't necessarily affect the score overall. Uh, and I have seen instances where those results produce false positives. Um, there have been instances where it told me there was an issue with something, but upon further inspection, that wasn't actually a problem. Now, if you're looking at PageSpeed Insights and you only see lab data, that means that there is not enough data available in the Chrome User Experience Report to give you any results for the site. You usually want to look at larger sites that have more traffic, because as we said before, it's only coming from Chrome users. So it's not indicative of your site as a whole. So you need to take into account your overall Chrome traffic when looking at these results. Now, anyone who uses Chrome for development purposes is familiar with Lighthouse. It's a tool that you can run in the developer console that provides a large amount of data. The performance section returns both LCP and CLS. It doesn't include first input delay, but it does include first contentful paint, speed index, and total blocking time. In addition, it provides some other results, including PWA support, best practices, accessibility, and SEO. And it also provides a list of opportunities for improvement, if applicable. So how do Web Vitals affect SEO? Well, from June through August of this year, Google started rolling Web Vitals into their search algorithm. So what that means is page experience is now part of ranking. And they use the data pulled from the Crux report. What this means is that for their top carousels feature, uh, which appears on Google search results and uh, Google News, any content that meets their news policies is now eligible for those properties, not just AMP as it was in the past. And they'll, they're bringing similar updates to the Google News app. Now, something to keep in mind is that pages do not need to score good on Core Web Vitals in order to be eligible for the Top Stories Carousel. All web pages are eligible as long as they're in compliance with Google's news policies. That includes structured data markup, uh, publication date, and several other markup-related requirements. Poor scores do not necessarily mean a bad ranking. Instead, they're using the page experience report as more of a tiebreaker in certain situations, similar to how they did with, uh, with mobile in the past, like mobile speed. But one thing that Google does point out is over time, as this becomes more of an important thing to search ranking, that publishers and probably your competitors are going to be focusing more on performance, which will or possibly could result in them getting better ranking due to those better scores. But with Google, everything, it's a closed box. It's impossible to say. So as we've covered, uh, Web Vitals consist of three primary metrics, uh, loading represented by largest contentful paint, interactivity represented by first input delay or total blocking time, and visual stability represented by cumulative layout shift. Overall, I really like what Google is trying to accomplish with Web Vitals. Uh, they're making an attempt to educate and provide tools for monitoring and enforcing the idea that websites should be user-focused and fast. So regardless of SEO implications, we should all focus more on the user and less on the developer experience and marketing demands. And remember, your users may not notice that your site is fast, but they will certainly notice if it is not. 
So thank you for joining me and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.